G'day folks and welcome to Peers with Phil and Grace. I'm Phil. I'm Grace. Hello. And we're going to talk you through something else. Uh, I have to apologise, last week if you tuned in, we said we were going to be talking about ales. However, I wasn't able to get all of the ales that I wanted this week, so instead we're going to do an ingredient focus. We're going to be focusing on what hops does to a beer and specific styles that showcase hops. So, what is a hop? Well, uh, a hop is a cone, it's a little plant, uh, it's about this big, it's green, um, striated, it is... Uh, How does it grow? Does it grow like a bean or like a... Because I don't actually know. It's a know. vine. Um, okay, yeah. there we go. So if you've ever been to Nelson, you see these uh, long trestles that go across the top and they're all hanging down. Mm -hmm. Those are hops. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so, hops are a pretty interesting little thing. It's, um, it's relative of cannabis, weirdly enough. Um, you can't smoke it. Uh, it does have soporphoric properties which make you go to sleep uh, or make you sleepy and some people put them in little muslin bags and chuck them under your pillow and it's supposed Ooh. to help you sleep. I don't know, I've never tried it. Um, I guess you kind of have to be sensitive to that sort of thing anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been using it in beer for over a thousand years. Um, we didn't always use it in beer. We did use it in other things. We did use other things mm -hmm. to flavour beer. That's right. But it started as a preserving ad additive, right? Yeah, that's right. To preserve beer. Yep. Going from England to India, so yeah. the IPA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's got properties that keep the bacteria away. That's right, and it was perfect for those long journeys from England to India when uh, the troops needed their beer. <laughs> so, um, so today we've got three beers that showcase hops. Excellent. Um, three styles that use hops. Um, yeah, they're, they're more of a showcase of hops than, than, for instance, the other ingredients like your malt and your yeast. Mm -hmm. um, so. To start off with, we've got another Pilsner. Now, we had a Pilsner last week, which was the... Berliner. Berliner mm -hmm. Pilsner, thank you. Um, that was a German Pilsner. Um, and while they're delicious, we have um, something a little closer to home. Uh, if you guys have never had anything from Deep Creek, all three of these beers are from Deep Creek. They're out in Riverhead. They're pretty choice. Um, they do some banging ribs. You should give them a look. Do they do food as well? Yeah. Of course they have to. Yeah, yeah. Did you not go to our tasting at Vingaris? No, 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 I didn't go. Oh, man. They did. Oh, wait, we've got our own can. I can just pull that up. Can I pour this myself? Yeah, sure. Can get wrong with it? Ah, now, do you want to practice the pouring method? Yep. Yeah, down the side, 45 degrees. Uh-huh. About halfway, you want a nice steady flow into the middle. Maybe a little too soon into the middle, but that's fine, that's okay. It's all right, it'll do the trick. Yeah. Alright, well, cheers. Ooh, yummy. Mm. See, I don't know what I'm smelling when I'm smelling hops, but I know that there's something in there that is different to other beers. It's fairly resinous. Mm -hmm. um, more floral than fruity. It smells yummy. Yeah. Now, the reason we chose a Pilsner is because um, a Pilsner is a style as a, as a hop focus style. It's still a lager, but it's more bitter, more light bodied, and more aromatic. It's kind of like, a, if you know about IPA, it's kind of like the IPA of lagers, uh, but without the body. It's still really, really light. That's tasty. I hope we don't get complaints about that comment. What? Uh, that will be like, the IPA of lagers. No, it's not. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> Making enemies up there, Phil. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's still really light, really bitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like when you you don't have much really upfront rich. happening in the palate, but then you've got all that bitter finish at the end. Yeah. So it's like that's it. That's it. You don't have all of that all of that stuff going on in your mouth, which is going to take away from the bitterness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you get it's a real not, expression of what right. the hops are doing in there. Exactly. Cool. Uh, right. Well, the next one we've got is this follow the APA, the Redwood. Oh, we've made a mistake. Oh, here we've only got uh, quickly <laughs> um, help her. <laughs> Just the cameraman. Thanks, Richard. All right. Now the APA stands for American Pale Ale. Mm -hmm. What are we looking for in there? So much the same, but more full-bodied. Mm -hmm. So it's still going to be really bitter, still going to be really aromatic, but um, it'll have a little more body behind it than your pills will. 
um, and quite t quite t typically more fruity as well because it's an ale. Now, I'd like to talk about ales more in depth, but um, we'll do that in another session. So, this might be a stupid question, but does colour mimic kind of how heavy or light your beer is going to be? No, is no, actually, colour okay. is um, color, a whole different kettle of fish. Colour is all to do with the, the malt that you use in a beer. Mm -hmm. So, when they put malts in a beer, they toast the malt okay. to get it to a certain colour. Um, also brings out different flavonoids, different, um, mm. yeah, it's <laughs> going down a rabbit hole, not sure we should go that far down. Um, okay. Anyway, the the level of toastiness, long story short, um, will dictate the will colour. Dictate the colour. Okay. That's right, yeah. So you can have uh, like a really, really, you can have black lagers for instance, which are really light bodied, but mm -hmm. black, like you can't see through them. Okay, so, interesting. Yeah. Anyway. I've always, I've been fooled good. by that. Yeah, yeah, I know. The Stormwatch Sports Beer is a good idea, a, a good, um... Which one's that? Uh, not the Stormwatch, sorry, Halitau, the Halitau Sports Beer is a good example of that. It's really, really light like body black beer. Ooh, that sounds four. delicious. No, it's not the number four. I'm getting confused. Yeah, see that sticks around a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. So more coating on the tongue. That's yum, I've always... When I first tried super hoppy more beer. More tropical, more fruity as well. It reminded me of looking an envelope. <laughs> and I'm not sure if that's a fair thing to say. It's it's changed my palette's changed a bit now and I recognise what it is and I'm able yeah. to pick it out. But when I first tried it I was like, mm, nah, nah. I think it's kinda of like when you first start to like veggies, you know? Like, yeah. I, yeah. I never liked veggies when I was a kid, but then I don't know, there was some something happened in my twenties and I liked bitter flavours and then I started yeah, liking they beer as well. Magical. May we have another glass? So we didn't think this uh, this one through very well. Not a blue one. No, it's fine. Okay. It's pretty. Blue? Oh, actually, no. This yeah, because we have to see the beer. Thanks. All right, and then what's this last one? All right, so that's the. That's pretty. <laughs> So what have we got? We've got uh, the Deep Creek Strength. That's right. Now I haven't actually tried this one yet. So Mountain IPA. I've tried all of these ones, but um, a long time ago. Mountain IPA. Now that's an interesting point. Um, whenever you see the word, the, the letters PA, it just means pale ale. People have been taking a lot of poetic, uh, poetic license um, with the type of pale ale it is. You'll see things like XPA, which has become a style now and wasn't five years ago. Um, you'll see things like any IPA, New England IPA, which is now a style. So as long as it's got pale ale in front of it, you know it's a PA in front of it, you know it's pale ale. Um, but yeah, a mountain IPA, for instance. Um, Scott, what were you up to? <laughs> This has got a different aroma coming through. Very much different, yeah. It's bigger as well. Like it's really, really full of the, the aroma. You don't you don't have to go far into the glass to, mm -hmm. to get I it. I mean I could smell it when I Real. opened it up. Yeah. So very fruity. So I've just got Passion another fruity. potentially mm. silly question. Mm. But so for an APA. Right. Is that solely American hops being used in there? Are we getting into the territory yeah, where... Yeah, it should be, yeah. Okay. Um, generally speaking, if you see, uh, like I said, there's a lot of license being taken with the names of beers, but if you see APA, it should be with American hops. It should be with American hops. Either American hops or at least the American clone of the hop. Um, it's not always the case. Sometimes they take it by style, which is very, full, uh, very high bitterness, very high aroma. Um, and medium body, um, but using New Zealand hops, and they call it an APA. But generally speaking, if you're doing that, using the APA style and using New Zealand hops, you'll find it says New Zealand Pale Ale in front of it instead. Or just gotcha. Pale Ale. Yep. NZPAs are also a new style that's been invented. Popping up all over the place. This is delicious. This bun is really I think it was one of my favorite. Yeah. The, no, it, well, I'm not sure what the... As an IPA, it's more balanced. Um, than the APA. The APAs, they tend to have not so much body to back up the bitterness and the aroma. Mm -hmm. IPAs, more body. Right, which is why I'm noticing it yep, in that that's right. first sort of instance when you're drinking. Well, I think that's it from us. 
Uh, tune in next week for... Um, what are we doing next week, Phil? Have you figured that one out yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was supposed to be hazy... Yeah, it'll be hazy IPAs. We're going to do some hazy IPAs next week. Lock it in. All right, cool. Excellent. See you then. Thank you. Bye.